coming up on the May edition of Channel 12's Lakeside News. The LMCC safety expert is back. This month he'll give viewers some important severe weather safety tips. We'll feature the City of St. Bonifacius in another edition of the Member City Showcase. Nate Reynolds will preview LMCC's summer concert series. And we'll learn all about the history of Big Island in another edition of Lake Lore. Lakeside News is next. Hi, I'm Chris Feld and welcome to Lakeside News, where you'll find news and events from around the lake area. Well, it's time once again for the LMCC safety expert. This month, everyone's favorite master of avoiding danger heads to the National Weather Service in Chanhassen to give you some important severe weather safety tips. Hmm, that guy sure reminds me of someone. And now it's time for Lake Minnetonka's favorite champion of safety, protector of humankind, and master of avoiding danger, the LCC's safety expert. All right, safety expert, grip it and rip it. <sighs> Ooh, I didn't see that uh, horse over there. Yowsers. Oh, hello. The LMCC safety expert here. It's a beautiful day here in Tonka Bay, Minnesota, near the LMCC forest and I've got some extremely important severe weather safety tips for you. Now, severe weather can strike at any moment. Damaging winds, hail, severe thunderstorms and tornadoes can wreak havoc this time of year. What, what is that? Is, is that a wind? Is, is that a fan? Camera operator, what are you doing? This is ridiculous. Now you're even in the shot. A fan? A fan for wind noise? Well, explain yourself. Enough of that. I don't want to hear this anymore. You are cruising for a bruising, mister. Get that fan out of here. All right, now that's better. Now you need to take severe weather seriously. I'm trying to help these people. Okay, mister, a storm could roll in here at any moment. Wait, wait a minute. Is that a storm cloud? You know what? I think we'll be okay, folks, because I, I don't see any lightning. Oh, oh, great. Now there is lightning and, oh, and some thunder, too. Uh, you know, folks, uh, I think I need to seek shelter immediately. I, I think that tree will uh, be perfect for me, and uh, the old golf club can uh, shield me from the weather. What was that? Oh, you think it's dangerous for me to use this golf club and not? I shouldn't stand under a tree? What do you know, camera operator? Listen, you just, you just be quiet. Oh, there's another thunderclap. Uh, you know, folks, uh, I, I need to seek some shelter. So uh, I think what we're going to do is uh, send it to the National Weather Service in Chanhassen, where they're going to have some valuable severe weather safety tips. Oh, you know, okay, I'll, I'll see you in a little bit. What we do here at the Weather Service is we're watching the weather to make sure that we get warnings out so that uh, people can be safe. We issue weather forecasts so that people know what's coming up. If you're prepared, then you're going to be that much more ready to react when we issue the warnings. If you hear the sirens, if you hear the weather radio sound off, if you're prepared, you're that much more ready to get to shelter. If there's a watch, that means that severe weather might happen. Uh, it doesn't mean it's definite. When we issue a warning, that means that there really is a storm out there that has a tornado or has really strong straight line winds or hail that means get to shelter. Sirens are not enough. You need to have some other kind of item that'll let you be aware of what that warning might be. Whether it's your smartphone, whether it's your weather radio, just be aware that you need to have multiple ways of getting that warning. We'll issue warnings for severe thunderstorms. There might not be a tornado, but there could be very strong straight line wind that can cause an awful lot of damage. The first thing with thunderstorms is to remember that there's lightning, and so with lightning you need to get inside. Get inside a building, get inside a vehicle. Meanwhile, back in the LMCC forest. This is not good, not good at all. 
It's important for you to have a plan to know what you're going to do if there is a tornado that's coming your way. The number one thing is to have looked around the house beforehand to figure out where would you go for shelter. So some people will go to the lowest floor. That's really the best place to go to the lowest floor, the interior room. You just need to have a, a supply of, of food and water, uh, batteries, flashlights, um, important paperwork, those sort of things. If you're out in a car, especially here in the Twin Cities, what you need to do is find a shelter, run inside a building if you possibly can. If you're caught at the absolute last second, um, then you've got the choice. You can either get out of your car and, and get into a ditch, or you can just stay inside your car, get down on the, on the bottom of the car, the floorboard. The number one thing is don't put yourself in that position. If there's a warning out, don't go driving around somewhere. The main thing is to be aware of the potential of severe weather and have a plan. Figure out what you're going to do if those warnings happen and make sure you have a way of getting those warnings. Again, sirens are not enough. Make sure you have a weather radio. Make sure you have a smartphone. Sign up for some kind of service that'll actually tell you if you're in the area where there's a warning. So make sure you're aware of those warnings and then have a plan if severe weather does strike. Oh, looks like the old uh, safety expert lost that storm cloud. But what do you expect from a master of avoiding danger? <laughs> well, I hope you all learned some valuable severe weather safety tips today. I know I sure did. I guess you could say this segment was electrifying. <laughs> Great, another storm cloud. Oh, well, I've got a splitting headache right now. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of the Expert Safety. Grandma, are the cookies ready yet? <coughs> Previously on America's favorite daytime drama, Lake Minnetonka, Brick has a secret. Bunny? Yes, Brick? I have a secret. What is it? I... 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 We interrupt this program to bring you this important message. The Lake Minnetonka Communications Commission, located in Spring Park, Minnesota, offers free television production classes. You heard it right, free, free, free. 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 All you need to do is sign up and show up to receive your special TV training. That's right, folks, that's, that's it. it. Wow, that sure looks easy. Our friendly and knowledgeable staff will help bring your idea to the big screen. Well, that is if you have a big screen. Why, thank you. We are very friendly and knowledgeable. You'll learn the secrets of how a television studio works. If you can't see video, try taking off the lens cap. Wow! Thanks, LMCC. From studio lighting and nonlinear editing to on-location shooting, we'll guide you down the path you need to succeed. Just call us at 952-471-7125 or go to our website at www.lmcc-tv.org to get started today. Hurry in, folks. An opportunity this good won't last forever. We now return you to your regularly scheduled programming. So, you're not mad? Of course not, you big lug. I just wish that you would have told me about LMCC's production classes. Maybe next time we can take classes. Together? Welcome back to Lakeside News. This month's Member City Showcase features the city of St. Bonifacius, a small town with a rich history. St. Bonifacius, Minnesota is a prosperous city located in Hennepin County. The city is centered around Minnesota State Highway 7 and County Road 92 and located about 25 miles west of Minneapolis. St. Bonifacius is part of the Waconia School District. The population of St. Bonifacius is approximately 2,500 people. The city has a total area of 1.1 square miles, all of it being land. St. Bonifacius is completely surrounded by the city of Minatrista. The city of St. Bonifacius has been successful in preserving their unique urban and rural lifestyles, all of which demonstrates their local character and identity. My family has been here 
Uh, from France, they moved in in 1854. I've lived my entire life in this town. I've raised my children in this town. I used to own a business in this town. I closed up in 2005, started by my father in 1932. And when our daughter got married in our Catholic church uptown here about 12 years ago, that was the fifth generation of our family to be married in that church. So yeah, I've got some pretty deep roots here. From the book that I put together in 2007, called St. Bonifacius in 1909. The opening paragraph of the first page is from the Waconia Patriot dated from December 24, 1909. St. Bonifacius is located 28 miles west of Minneapolis on the Great Northern Railroad, two miles west of Lake Minnetonka and one half mile north of Clearwater Lake, which is Waconia today. We had it all. And by the picture inside the opening cover shows, you can see that the commerce that we had at that time was fantastic. The entire main street is loaded with wagons and horses of people coming in to do their commerce there. I gave a talk some years ago at the Mound Historical Society. And I says, I'm here to talk to you today about what St. Bonifacius looked like 150 years ago. But if you don't want to sit here and listen to me describe it, drive through Main Street today because it's all the same buildings. Back in the early 1900s, we were bigger than Mound, we were bigger than Waconia, we were bigger than Excelsior. We had a man in this town by the name of M.H. Hagerly. He was responsible for starting the creamery. He was responsible for starting the library, the public school. He was responsible. He was the first mayor the city ever had. He was responsible for getting the canning factory going. He was a man with vision. And when he died unexpectedly, through my years of research, it appears that part of St. Bonifacius died with him. And we started getting more and more conservative and smaller and smaller and smaller. We still have a very thriving library that is used extensively. I congratulate those people at the library. We, we have a Lions Club that's now celebrating 40 years. We've got a Legion and we've got a commercial club, um, a sportsman club, uh, so many things going for the community by people that are genuinely interested in St. Bonifacius. I take pride in the fact that what started out 10 years ago with 10 of us interested in preserving the heritage of our forefathers, that our membership has now grown to 161 people from almost every state of the union that are interested in remembering the good times. I believe that St. Bonifacius still today is one of the finest small communities around here to grow up in, to raise a family in. We have a lot of community pride. We've got some terrific organizations and we have had throughout the years at St. Bonnie. Uh, a fantastic ball team that goes way back to the early 1900s and uh, just a lot of small town atmosphere. We are open up here uh, presently on Tuesday mornings in, uh, at our St. Bonifacius Historical Society and welcome guests. And if you want to come in to just browse what we have here. For non-emergencies, please call the Minnetrista Public Safety Department at 952-446-1131. For more information on the City of St. Bonifacius, you can contact the City Hall at 952-446-1061 or visit them on the web at www.ci.stbonifacius.mn.us. Coming up after the break, 
Nate Reines will preview the LMCC's Summer Concert Series. Lakeside News returns in a moment. I'm Jen Olson, State Senator from Senate District 33, which uh, serves all of the Lake Minnetonka communities within Hennepin County. Um, I always appreciate the opportunity to come and be a part of uh, Capital Update, and also I welcome hearing from many constituents who say they have watched the program. So thank you for the wonderful service that you give to, uh, to the, our whole area uh, at Lake Minnetonka communica Cable Communications. Coming up next, we'll learn all about the history of Big Island in this month's Lake Lore. Lakeside News returns in a moment. Joe. Steven. Eric, over here. I'll take him right there. <laughs> all right, take care. Thank you, over here. Big Island on Lake Minnetonka is a 273-acre forested paradise, once home to the Dakota and is later discovered by settlers in 1852. The island was populated by small cottages and a large 20-room colonial-style home during the late 1800s. In 1905, the Twin City Rapid Transit Company purchased 65 acres of land on Big Island and within a year, an amusement park was built. The park grounds featured a 1,500-seat music pavilion, a picnic kitchen, and several rides and attractions. An underwater cable from the mainland provided power for the park, and with a 186-foot electric beacon and water tower as its centerpiece, the park flourished into a popular tourist attraction. A large dock was built at the entrance of the park to hold three large steam-powered ferry boats that could transport a thousand people to the island at a time. 
On a busy weekend, the park would be occupied by as many as 10,000 patrons. Because of the expensive operating costs, the park had to close in 1911. The island is now owned by the nearby city of Orono and the Minnehaha Creek Watershed District. It has since been cleaned up and is now known as the Big Island Nature Park. Well, there you have it. News and events happening in and around the lake area. If you have a news story or see something exciting going on, please let us know. We can be reached here at the LMCC at 952-471-7125 via email at lmcc at lmcc-tv.org or please check us out on our website at lmcc-tv.org. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next month on Channel 12's Lakeside News. Here's what's coming up on First Responder TV. The LMCC safety expert stops by to give you some important severe weather tips. I'll head up to South Lake Minnetonka Police Department and talk to Police Chief Brian Litzy in this edition of Meet the Chief. We'll give you an update on scams that have been targeting citizens in the lake area. And we'll highlight some upcoming public safety events and give you some important fire prevention tips in Safety Source. First Responder TV airs daily on LMCC's Channel 12.